Um, so I'd like to thank Daryl and the organisers for allowing me to come here. It's um, pretty exciting for me and I'm a little bit nervous um, in front of this audience, so please bear with me. I've also got a bit of a uh, hoarser than usual voice from uh, sharing a single bed with a five-year-old with croup, my own child, not um, one of my patients, <laughs> two nights ago. <laughs> um, so, um, look, I was surprised to find when I did my master's that I had a bit of an interest in health systems, um, performance and design, and um, I'm novice in all of this, but, um, and the related human aspects. Um, it wasn't something that I thought I would find interesting, but um, I think it's a really important thing and, um, and the more I've delved into it, the more um, interesting I've found it. And so at the moment, with the support of the, um, the prize committee of ANZIX, I'm undertaking a study on burnout amongst intensivists in Australia and New Zealand. Um, trying to look at some of the organisational or workplace factors that might be associated with burnout in, in our setting here in Australia and New Zealand. So for those in the audience who um, happen to work as consultant intensivists, I hope you'll be on the lookout for an invitation to participate in a survey, uh, which will be released in a couple of weeks' time. If you don't receive one in your inbox, um, but like, would like to contribute to what we uh, do know about this topic, I'll pop my contact details back up at the end, um, so you make sure you get a link. Um, so this afternoon, I'm going to... I, th I think there's a lot out there about burnout at the moment. It's quite topical. It's a bit of a, um, a buzzword at the moment. Um, and most of the stuff that's written about it in our setting is opinion piece um, and commentary, uh, sharing of personal experience. And I think that is immensely important. And I think that conversation needs to continue. Um, and these are all uh, stories and thoughts and opinions that we need to hear more about. Um, for the purposes of this afternoon, however, I thought I'd just um, dry it up a bit and just try and focus on Burnout 101, really, so, um, um, and avoid sharing my opinions, which I have some, um, until I actually find out the results of this, um, this survey and, um, and see if what my opinions and thoughts and hypotheses are, are, are supported by that or not. Um, so. I imagine most people here, by um, nature of the fact that you've come to this session, would have some idea as to um, what burnout is. Um, I'll also talk about why it happens and who it happens to and how common it is. Um, burnout's a, a term which, um, which um, uh, first came into colloquial use in the United States in the 60s uh, to describe drug users, so to think about the burnout hippie or the burnout stoner, and that was the first time we started using it in our language, really. Um, but in academic circles, it was um, first described in the occupational psychology literature in the mid-70s. Um, so then it was used to describe those who've become worn down and disinterested in, um, after they've been exposed to persistent and pervasive um, emotional stresses and frustrations. So it's regarded as a syndrome that's specifically related to work and uh, is thought to develop as, as, as a consequence of these chronic stresses. So it's seemingly a phenomenon of the 20th and the 21st centuries as our working patterns changed and our working environments changed. Um, but there are some authors that have um, considered the 19th century malady of neurasthenia as an early description which is synonymous with this. I, I'm not so sure about that. Um, so when it was first described, it was recognised in uh, helping type professions, so medicine, nursing, social work and teaching. And the, the, first, the first sort of uh, observations of it were in a, um, a, a, a clinic populated by um, social workers and, and uh, doctors. Um, and so in this context, it's related to the concepts of, um, some of you might be familiar with, of compassion satisfaction and compassion fatigue. Um, compassion satisfaction refers to the, the pleasure that you derive from uh, being able to do your work and being able to do your work well. Um, it, it's that feeling that we get that keeps us going, I think. Compassion fatigue, on the other hand, encompasses burnout and, and also this, this other construct of um, secondary traumatic stress. That, that's not thought to be common, um, but, it, but it does have a significant impact on a person's ability to function effectively in the workplace. Uh, so burnout itself is um, described as having three components. 
Um, firstly, emotional exhaustion. So that's the feeling of being um, overextended and exhausted by the emotional demands of your work. Um, and this is considered a core feature of burnout. The second is depersonalization or cynicism uh, towards one's work. Uh, I think a lot of us could identify with uh, feelings of cynicism from time to time. Um, health workers often describe um, you know, developing a protective strategy of uh, emotional distance or detached concern. Um, but, but this concept is, is sort of a few steps further than that. It's considered more callous and um, more of a, a negative extension of that. And uh, the third fe feature that features in um, most of the definitions out there is that of a um, diminished sense of personal accomplishment uh, or professional efficacy, which refers to a lack of achievement and productivity at work. Um, so this, though, might just be as a result of the other two. So it's pretty difficult to feel accomplished when you're emotionally drained and, um, and detached from your work. So when you are burnt out, you might feel frustrated, angry, or you might experience moral distress. So these are all things that I think a lot of us feel a lot of the time. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're burnt out. Um, and you may feel disillusioned and cynical regarding your work and your patients. I think that we need to think about this as... as it's not a fixed state. It's not something that you're either burnt out or you're not, although it can be. But there can be degrees in between and there can be times that you feel these things and then you pull yourself back. Um, anyway, it's not quite as fixed as all of, all of this. Um, but it's hardly surprising that health professionals' um, uh, experience of burnout has been described as having um, significant impact on both their personal and their professional lives. So it's associated with an incidence of depression and anxiety and self-reported measures of personal distress um, and an association with increased use of alcohol and drugs as well as uh, relationship and family problems. Um, it's not a far stretch to imagine that dissatisfied or stressed um, and burnt out, depressed, anxious healthcare professionals are not able to fully engage with their patients and their families. Burnout's been associated with some measures of suboptimal care um, and the incidence of self-perceived major medical errors. Uh, it's recognised as a factor in job turnover and absenteeism um, and by its own definition it's associated with decreased productivity and professional effort. Why does it happen? Um, so, the, ooh, that is not what I anticipated. <laughs> there are several explanatory models in the literature, um, and it seems uh, most of them are variations of a similar theme. Um, most commonly accepted uh, model, but somewhat simplistic, is the imbalance between job demands and job, job resources. So job, job demands are those aspects um, which require sustained physical or mental effort. Um, as opposed to the job resources, which are just all the things that counter your job demands. So um, things that develop your growth and development, having feedback, having supportive colleagues, having control or autonomy over your work, um, and having social supports outside the workplace and within the workplace. Um, taking all of these things into consideration, burnout's been proposed as the link between organisational culture and the quality of the healthcare we deliver. Quite rightly, there seems to be an increase, have been an increase in the medical literature and, and, and mainstream media about the discussion of the perilous state of healthcare professionals' mental health and well-being. Um, bringing that back to burnout, I'd like to say that this is not a mental health disorder. This is not a diagnosable condition. Um, this is an experience, a life experience. But taking it back to this, the US Critical Care Society Collaborative published um, in 2016 simultaneously in three journals a call to action about burnout syndrome in critical care health uh, professionals. I think this was in the context of increasing concerns about the changing face of healthcare provision in the US. Um, and most of it makes reference to the results of this American Physicians Lifestyle Survey, which was published in 2016. It places critical care physicians at the top of a ranking of those with highest burnout. Um, half. 
I don't know if it is all as grim as that. Who burns out? We know intensivists burn out, intensive care nurses burn out, emergency physicians burn out, anaesthetists, GPs, trainees, medical students, hospital admin staff, corporate executives, farmers, teachers, builders and music teachers. So we're not alone. That doesn't diminish how important this is in terms of our environment and our workplace. The 2013 Beyond Blue National Survey on Mental Health of Doctors and Medical Students reported rates ranging between 15 and 35 per cent. Um, so emotional exhaustion, 35, around 35 per cent. Cynicism, around 35 per cent. Decreased personal efficacy, around 15 per cent. 2016, the Austral Australasian College of Emergency Medicine Workforce Sustainability Survey reported between 20 and 40 per cent of respondents scoring highly in these areas. There's similar results in a um, New Zealand hospital physician's study in 2009. Um, and almost 10 years ago, there was a survey published of Australian intensivists, missing out the Kiwi friends, um, and it's responded that 42% of respondents showed signs of emotional exhaustion. Um, just over 32 scored highly in the realm of cynicism and 37 showed a low degree of personal accomplishment. So what we're trying to achieve with this survey, and uh, I would like to encourage you to go forth and encourage others to, um, to answer this survey, is to find out the lay of the land where we are, um, looking at associated factors, looking at, at how people are feeling out there. I know there are limitations in this type of, um, of study, but hopefully it will give us some answers and that we can start um, uh, of the variables in the Australasian context and we might be able to develop some further strategies and interventions to, to help with this issue um, and, and put in place some recommendations in terms of um, those who are currently experiencing it. Thanks.